Hey everybody, Matt here from Matt's Movies Music and More, welcoming you to this week's movie review episode. And I've got a special treat for you guys. I'm going to be talking about Star Wars. <laughs> Actually, no, I'm not. I'm not talking about Star Wars. I'm going to make references to Star Wars because the movie I'm talking about today is the 1985 cartoon animated movie Star Chaser, The Legend of Orin. Directed by Stephen Hahn, and sadly, I don't can't seem to find any pictures of some of these voice actors who um, do the voices in the film. But the actors who voice the characters are include Joe Colligan, Carmen Angenzano, and Anthony DeLongis. Now, why did I say Star Wars at the beginning of this film? Because a lot of you out there who probably have heard of this movie will know that it's actually considered a Star Wars ripoff, especially with many of the shots in the film. Now, I've watched it and I've watched Star Wars and yes, they've got a point. There are scenes in the film which are very similar to Star Wars. Um, the plot is kind of similar to Star Wars as well, although being slightly different with slightly different um, character names and stuff like that, but pretty much it's, it is a Star Wars kind of ripoff. Um, so I'll, I'll explain about the movie and about why I picked it first and then I'll tell you about the film which is Star Chaser was one of those films that I had on video as a kid um, I grew up with it and um, I remember it being out on entertainment and video uh, UK video casing I think it was 1986 I think it came out um, and it was a PG um, I look at it now and I kind of think if it had a DVD or Blu-ray release in the UK, which I really hope one day will come, um, I, I would think it wouldn't get a PG, it'd probably get a 12, maybe a borderline 15, because it's got scenes in it which I think aren't suitable really for children, um, and I'll explain that as, the, as this um, video goes along. But without further ado, the movie itself is based in a, in a far, far distant universe in which um, a planet named Trinia in which human slaves live in the underground mines and they're trying to dig out crystals for a god and the god's name is Zygon and you see Zygon come out to sort of greet the um, people who are digging for the crystals and um, he's wearing this big black mask with horns it's kind of the Darth Vader character in this film and He's got robot minions who are kind of like stormtroopers with whips and guns. And um, they're the ones that are controlling the, the human slaves in the mines. And they're working whatever, however many hours it is a day just to have a bit of food. And they're being treated really badly. And the poor old guy who um, I believe is the grandfather of the uh, female character that Orin um, is in love with called Ilan. And um, Orin's a young kid. I mean, he's basically Luke Skywalker in this movie. But let's just, let's just say Orin is Luke Skywalker. And um, with the grandfather, the grandfather, because he um, is digging and digging constantly, Orin is filling up his bucket, the grandfather's bucket, with the crystals that he got so that it saves the grandfather from getting any more punishment and stuff like that. Shows how much Orin really cares about his girlfriend and her, her, her grandfather. And obviously you've got um, Oren's brother. Uh, Oren's brother is called Callie. And Callie's blind. And he's down in the mine sort of giving the, um, the slaves down there the, buck the pails of water um, to help them um, with their work and stuff. And whilst Oren is, um, is digging for the crystals, he comes across this sword which has been buried in, um, in the mines. And he manages to pull the sword out. And from, from the blade, all of a sudden, this, this ghostly spirit comes out and talks to Orin. And then the blade disappears. So then he's just got the um, he's got the halt, which they call it the halt, which is the, the handle of the, of the sword. And it's kind of a magical sword, a bit like a, a, a bloody lightsaber. It's just like a lightsaber. Um, so you can say... Luke Skywalker finds a lightsaber buried amongst the rocks, so he's got his lightsaber, although I go back to calling it Holt. And um, he finds out that he can actually control this sort of force with the blade, that he can actually 
fight with it, but it it he doesn't have the ability to control it all the time. It's only occasional that he can control it. So it doesn't always work, but he tries to um, escape with um, with Elam, and um, he says, "Look, we need to get out of here because this is really, really hard to to survive." So Callie's saying, "Like, don't leave me, Orin. You know, because I'm I'm a kid and I want you to be here and stuff." So Orin and Elam escape um, using like. Um, I think they get into like the back of like um, the the transportation things which they pour the crystals into, and they take them up to Zygon. And you find out that um, Zygon um, he unmasks himself after he spots them um, trying to escape, and he talks to them and says, "You know, you're not the first to escape, and you're not the last." So he um, he actually kills El uh, Elan right in front of Orin by strangling her and um, Orin manages to escape and um, as he's escaping he has to dig out and gets out of what he calls mine world and up to the top level of of, of the planet and once he's got out onto the top level of Trina um, he um, is running through the swamps and gets caught by these weird sort of um, robots which are kind of part man, part creature and stuff. And they're really grotesque. I mean, that's why I don't think this film could be a PG now. I think really a 12 because those scenes are quite frightening where they're like, you know, oh, we're going to we're gonna cut you up and take the parts that we want so that we can put them on ourselves. And um, as he's trying to escape, he's got the hold and um, he manages to... Um, it's accidental, but one of them gets killed using the hold. So... Orin tells them, look, I need I need the Hulk to so give me the Hulk, otherwise you're going to die too. And so he manages to get set free by one of them and runs through the swamps. And there's where he bumps into a character called Dag, who is a crystal smuggler. Please welcome Han Solo. He's Han Solo, basically. And he's voiced by Carmen Angianzo, who is a really, really good actor, actually, but... When I'm watching this film and I'm hearing the voice and I'm looking at the character, it might just be me, but I've always pictured him to be Robert Forster, who is an underrated um, actor from films like The Black Hole, um, Alligator, and obviously in the 1990s when Quentin Tarantino cast him as Max Cherry and uh, Jackie Brown. Um, I think Robert Forster's a great actor, and I always thought it would be him because he is such a cool character. But... Dag has his ship, which is um, uh, a robotic ship, and basically Dag takes Orin sort of under his wing and helps him a little bit, but he's tagged along with Dag to try and find out what's going on and stuff, because he's so confused and he wants to find out the truth about what the Holt is all about. And um, while Saigon's still after him, um, Dag is trying to do his crystal deals um, so he's going on planets like Togo Togo and um, on the planet Borgadon. And um, he happened to have kidnapped um, a Fembot, which is quite funny because um, the Fembot is very hostile against Dag and everyone else. And he finds out through the ship, um, his ship, that um, it tells him, it says, how can I get to the circuits to try and control her or whatever? And the, rope, the, um, the ship tells him that the circuits are actually in her posterior, and so he has to lift up the flaps to her backside, messes around with the cabling a little bit, and then she comes out and she's like, hi, how are you? You know, kind of seductively towards Dag. And um, she becomes really, really cool then. The ship's called Arthur. I forgot about that. They should have called it Arthur. So that's basically the Millennium Falcon is Arthur. And whilst Orin and Dag are on um, Togo Togo, um, he meets Aviana, who kind of has a similarity to Ilan um, with the way she talks, the way she looks. I believe the same actress does the voices of both characters, so I can see there being similarities. But um, her father is the governor of Borgadon, so her, she has a big deal in this film, and that she is um, very important here. But um, when you watch it, you can see that it's kind of going in this 
Star Wars vein with some of the shots from Star Wars, they have been really replicated to a T with this film. And the Zygon character, Darth Vader type thing, I don't want to spoil the rest of the movie because I really like the film, um, but he kind of has Darth Vader vibes, but at the same time not because he kind of has this like um, poshness to his voice and the way he talks, you know, he's like thousands of years ago, a primitive chess computer made the first move and he's like, you know, I am playing checkmate and, you know, against the human race and stuff because he basically wants to control the, the planet. That's what he wants to do. That's the whole movie, basically. He's trying to control the planet and Orin is the only one that can stop him, basically, what the movie is. So... I don't really want to spoil any more of it because I think you really need to see it for yourself. But is the movie for you if you like Star Wars? If you like Star Wars, maybe, maybe not. Maybe you might want to watch it and laugh or get more and more angry and frustrated and people be out there probably going, couldn't be any worse than The Phantom Menace. But um, when the movie came out in 1985, um, it was released by Atlantic Releasing and... It was marketed as one of the first animated films to be shot in 3D. Now, the UK video release wasn't in 3D or anything like that. I've never seen a 3D cut of the film. I don't even think a 3D version of the movie has ever been released on um, VHS or DVD or Blu-ray. Um, it still hasn't been released on Blu-ray to this day because I remember owning a copy of it from MGM, which was released in America, I think, in the early 2000s. Um, I, I don't own it anymore, I sold it for a decent price um, and um, it's one of those films I really hope will come out on Blu-ray at some point because it deserves to, it's it's um, it's a fun movie, I mean it bombed at the box office, I mean I think it cost like 15 million dollars to make, I think it only took in about three and a half million so yeah it was a flop but I, I really like it, regarding if you want to see Star Chaser um, I think Buying it on DVD is going to be quite tricky for you because obviously it's quite pricey on the second-hand market. Um, it's probably not available on any streaming sites apart from YouTube. So if you can find it on YouTube, I'd recommend watching it. Um, is it a film that you must own? I, I, I don't think you need to own it if you're not a child from the 80s. If you're a child from the 80s like I was, who had it in my video collection as a kid, it was one of the early videos I had. Uh, and it's a video that I held dear to my heart and I enjoyed it so much at the time and being a young kid I didn't really understand it but I just thought it was really cool and I've watched it more and more and I've tried to understand it and it is kind of incoherent at times but it to me it's a lot of fun um, it's something that I enjoy and I'm really glad that I picked it to talk about so you know I've had a few recent films that I've talked about on this channel which have been a few, bit disappointing but um I'm glad I picked something that, that made me happy. And um, again, I really hope it comes out on Blu-ray at some point. I think I'll, I'll, I'll be buying it definitely when it comes out. So that was my review of Star Chaser, The Legend of Orin. So be sure to give me some feedback. Let me know what you think of Star Chaser, The Legend of Orin. I, 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 I can't sing it any enough. You know, I just think it's great. Um, did you like it? Did you hate it? You know, um, and... If you like and subscribe to this channel, it'd be absolutely amazing. I've got all the links on my video to the Facebook, the Twitter, the Instagram, the YouTube, of course, and the Patreon site. Um, be sure to check them all out. Um, fingers crossed. Um, check out my next video soon and uh, hopefully catch you guys soon. All the best.